so tell, tell me, me about, about the, the Eye of, of Sauron. Sauron. Hang on, I gotta hit the button so you're not all echoey. <laughs> eye of Sauron. No, it's too late. You missed your chance. Damn it. Uh, and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Axe. We'll switch in the bits in our little Linux powered studio, joined every week by uh, the Mark Man himself who sometimes visits partially full cemeteries. That is one Jordan is wrong. Look at him. Terrifying. But not one Canadian tonight. Nay, we deliver Canadians in stereo. Look at him. Always dressed appropriately. What you would expect. One Sandy Martin. Together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic. Join us live here on Twitch. Help it us form. Can I do this? Do I get all the things together? Maybe I do. I don't know. Did I? Test and production. Cocaine. Full, 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 full. Hey, hey, it worked for once. Maybe. I don't know. Buttons. Do your things. Ha. Damn it, Linus. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Listen. We, uh, uh, curse you, Linus. Damn you. What have we been up to, man? It's uh, been another week. Oh, if you're wondering, Pedro died again. So um, maybe we'll get another one in in a week or so. But I want, to start off, I want to start off by saying... It has been nine years since Steam first showed up on Linux this week. Jeez. Holy yeah. Jeez. Does it, does it? Now, I had my suspicions because um, somebody was talking about these little guys, the uh, Steam controllers, Areola mm-hmm. controllers coming out seven years ago. I'm like, whoa, wait, it's been seven oh. years? Jesus. Right? Antiques. That's crazy. <laughs> And um, I, I kind of feel bad because uh, there's like a Steam controller dedicated uh, subreddit. And these people have like gotten hardcore of like tracking these things down and hoarding them. And they are paying outrageous amounts of money for them, like $70, $80, $100. I'm like, and I got like two of them just in boxes because they were five bucks a piece and you can't have them. And I'm not going to do anything with them. But yeah, I'm happy birthday and let's make it 10 years next year. And we'll have the Steam Deck this time next year. That's going to be kind of exciting when you think about it. And I guess I would really, uh, we all need to thank all of the lovely Windows gamers who have helped fund the development of Linux mm. gaming. Taste that salt. Steam, yeah. mm-hmm. And especially <laughs> the uh, Steam Deck. <laughs> and uh, what else? Oh, PSU. Dude. All right, check this out. So we do the show. Last week, right? We get done with the show, like, Eastern time, like, 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that. Like, okay. I just leave everything on. I can make dinner and, you know, futz around. By the time I get ready to go to sleep, cut everything off. Dap. It's, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm me. I'm going to sleep, like, three hours no matter what. I get up on Sundays because I want to get the show out on time. I come in here. I don't even have, like, two sips of tea in me. I'm like, Rrr. cutting things on, sit down. Apparently, I forgot to cut off the after shows in box. I got three PCs down here. Um, mm. And it was still running all night, which you don't notice because these are small business PCs. They're silent. And, well, I noticed it because the power supply, the fan in the power supply decided to scare the absolute shit out of me because it went from silence in here to like, I'm importing some audio to like, your brain's not ready for that nonsense. On three right. hours of sleep. It's like, what? No. Nope. Stuff starts grinding and you, you immediately go, what the fuck? Dude. What, did I, oh. yeah. what, did I, what button did I push? So I did find <laughs> out uh, that was the HP, the Dells. Thanks, Mike. Uh, still running strong. But the uh, PSU fan pulled it apart and found the fan, you know. Ugh. HP, good job on like the power supply thing. It's just like ratcheted into the case. You just pull it up and slide it on. I'm like, nice. Then, of course, I take apart the uh, power supply and I find the fan, and I'm like, hmm, that's got like four pins on it. So I probably need to replace it with this fan. Find the fan, get them from China for like six bucks in like nine months, and find one in the States, a $20 part. I'm like, oh, I don't like this thing that much. Found a refurbished power supply for like 12. So, yeah, that's, I, wow. that's that's usually with like power supply repairs. Mm-hmm. Like you're almost universally better off just fucking buying the new power supply. So I went ahead and ordered, um, the fan from China and I have the spare, then I got the replacement and I'm probably going to order some spare power supplies just for the Dells to have them because it was fortunate that it was on Sunday, but I did get another thing out of fruit. Oh, I didn't get this from out of because out of fruit, you were out girlfriend. Um, 
I got it from Chicago Electronics, uh, Raspberry Pi 02W. This is the quad core, the monster, the beast. I haven't even opened it yet. I haven't had time. But I'm going to be making uh, a thing with it, with this. I can't even see what's going on. It's from UK Supplier. Uh, Pi Hut. And uh, it's like mysterious brackets and like leveling gel. So stay tuned for that. That's all I got. How about you, Sandy? Uh, just a lot of getting some personal stuff done. A lot of paperwork. Got to get filled out. Had to do some stuff on base. Uh, and then the remainder of the time was watching LWDW, you know, watching, uh, you guys, Jill, Pedro having an awesome time on LWDW. Is which, that your takeaway again, from that show? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You guys listen. I always love watching LWDW. You guys, it's so much fun. And then plus watching Jordan on Thursday doing dicey dungeons. That game was oh, pretty... So- it got pretty dicey at times, you know what I mean? Yeah, did, did, did you like me doing my really bad Ronnie Coleman impression the entire time? Because <laughs> yeah, I was, was so out of it. pretty good. Yeah. I'm, 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 I had no energy left at the end of that day. I'm just oh. like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta get this stream done, motherfucker. <laughs> so, Jordan, I do get to ask you. <gasps> yes. Ooh, ooh. What happened? Uh, uh, domestic abuse. Ah, all right. Ah. Yeah. Wait, wait, did you beat up the uh, fireplace or? Nope. No. Nope. Fireplace beat me up. You straight up it ran into pull. something in a parking lot, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Le bonk. Moral of the story, kids. Watch where you're going. <sighs> hey, man. I, I was sharing that pain in the pre pre super shows, and man, I tapped myself on the back of the head, too. And that's, uh, yep. that, that's always fun. I thought we were going to go through a concussion free 2021. Nay. <laughs> was not to be. Nay. Nay. Nope. Do you think we I mean, could, I mean, it would it, like would it even affect the horse at this point if it was concussed? I, I, I mean, I mean, you know, the the horse more resembles the bowl of Jello they use for the concussion demo rather than the actual former brain it once had. <laughs> but you, you you know we're we're here we're gonna slap it on the ass one more time. It's the steam Linux. update of the week. So tell, tell me, me about, about the eye, eye of Sauron. Sauron. Hey God, I got it. The button so you're not old. <laughs> Spy of Sauron. No, it's too late. You missed your chance. Damn it. Um, yeah. So, um, in true Valve fashion as of late, and they kind of put the ball in the developer's court. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about Battle Eye plus Proton. Battle Eye, like EAC, is another wholly ineffective anti cheating uh, security theater system that game companies and developers like to tack on to, for the feels. Well, they previously brought up Battle. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, hey, man, this is going to be a thing. Uh, the same day they announced EAC support, they said, hey, it's also going to work with Battle Eye. This one's a little different. It is. But starting yesterday, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, Arc Survival Evolved, Battle Eye, all that anti cheat stuff with those games are going to work with Proton, which is good. But unlike. Unlike EAC, with EAC, it's 100% in the developer's court. They got to log into the EAC. They got to click a checkbox and they're done. Then we can play it. Back for blood dubs. Um, But, like, seriously, you've got, like, the four people in the world that actively really want to play Back for Blood. Come on, cut that back on. And But with Battle Eye, you have to request access to this through them. Like, got to call them up. Be like, yo, can I get some of this? And the hook, yeah. So there's kind of a little more friction there, right? I guess this this is what you get when you have like uh, a service that's doing your anti cheat, right? Got to have them turn it on. I'm surprised they don't actually expose that to the end users, but that might just be part of their whole shtick. I don't know. Um, now again, now now it's the whole game of chicken, right? Are these guys are these games going to get their anti cheat uh, support for Linux enabled before the Steam Deck comes out or after? And I'm thinking a lot. And I'm thinking that probably just as like a cheap PR ploy, a lot of these uh, a lot of these companies are going to wait until after they want to do the wait and see. They'll be like, oh, um, now available on the Steam Deck. Come buy our game, you guys. Ah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. No, I could definitely see that. Like uh, a lot of companies will wait until the very last minute to do anything about it. Like uh, and I kind of agree with what valve is trying to do here. Like they're, they're pretty much and I think Ven said it best earlier. Like it's them going, you know, let's, we got this. 
going for you guys. Now it's up to you guys to get out there and make sure it's working. You know, so um, I can't really see like a lot of developers going right away, like unless they already have Linux, native Linux support, which like Linux said, Arc Survival and uh, Mountain Blade, Banner Lord already like support two, and they're on top two, of that. Two, two doesn't, does it? I don't know. I'm, I know, I know the first one definitely does, but the second one, I don't oh, know. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, the first one for sure has uh, native Linux support. So, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it is um, not necessarily willful ignorance, but ignorance of like, there's a lot of these people, um, development teams, publishers, they, they still don't know what a proton is. So it might take that rolling out. Hey, this is safe. Things are not going to explode and catch on fire. And turns out, not as many people as you were thinking are installing Windows 11 on their Steam Deck, so you might want to do something about this. Well, yeah, I mean, not not if you want to play those DirectX 12 games, right? right. Yeah. So, <laughs> Valve is yeah. going to tell us all about their decks, and they're going to show their decks off. They're going to stream their decks. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a big info dump coming, joining us on the November the 12th, so that is next Friday. Uh, it's a one-day-only event. Uh, for teams who want to develop on the for the Steam Deck, there's going to be uh, talks about Proton support, uh, Steam on the deck, how it's going to function, uh, development without the dev kit. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of crazy stuff. See, uh, that, that, I'm definitely going to check it out personally. That's like, what I'm kind of uh, interested in the uh, development without a dev kit. Because, yeah. A, this is either going to be stressing, like, the limits of what Proton can actually do without having, like, someone like Eggy babysitting it constantly to make sure that things are working. Or, um, or like, what, what are they going to just run it in a virtual machine, actually get a computer and install Arch Linux on it? <laughs> like... <laughs> Like I, I I don't I don't know because there's definitely going to be pushback regarding that. So I'm curious what Valve's solution for it is. Well, I mean, there's the argument to be made. You know, um, real developers shouldn't have to use a command line, right? <laughs> tell, tell, tell tell that to a Visual Studio <laughs> code blocks. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of interested about this because AMD is going to be showing up to this uh, to talk about the APU, and I'm very fascinated because that's custom silicon that was developed. This is the first time we're going to be seeing that um, on the GPU side, and mm-hmm. I, I'm I really want to see what they talk about. I, I'm going to be there the entire time watching it. I don't know if I'm going to restream it or not. Uh, if that opportunity shows up, I'll let everybody know. I'll post about it in their Discord and like, hey, we're going to. Mm-hmm talk over the important things and do all that fun stuff. Yeah. But that's good. That's good. That's communication. That's reaching out. That That's a valve yes. doing very non valve things. So the, the, the thing they should have done in the first place. Yeah. Fair. Exactly. We are the 1.13%. Oh, it's crawling up, baby. It's crawling Slowly. up. Slowly. Slowly but surely, the new Steam hardware and software survey for October 2021 has been published. And lo and behold, uh, we got some new news. Uh, so it looks like uh, it looks like Manjaro is taking a bit of a dip with uh, Arch Linux and Ubuntu. The, uh, the latest version of Ubuntu. But, 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 but. Okay, you got like we got Ubuntu and Linux Mint and more Ubuntu. But Valve, why do you put Arch? And Manjaro in quotes, man. What's up with Arch? <laughs> Why you got to be I, like that, man? It's like I don't, I don't know. They, 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 like they might be Arch. Uh, arch. Yeah. Yes, Arch. <laughs> well, what 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 stood out to me is if you go to the Linux stats and you expand it, uh, desktop or uh, description colon free desktop dot org, twenty one oh eight dot four flat pack runtime has bumped in five percent. So apparently, more people are trying out Steam via the flat packs. Uh, that seems to be becoming a bit more of a popular distribution method for it. Hmm. Something, something, something I noticed that was just kind of interesting. Um, yeah. You know what? So it, I, I, I like the idea, just how meta it is running like a uh, pressure vessel inside of a flat pack, like right on. Uh, I get uh, it. Oh, oh, honey, let me, let me explain to you one day the, the, the perils of Docker and Docker and why you should. Bro, uh, do you even Docker and Docker? Uh, uh, Docker and Docker, Docker adjacent to Docker, Docker, Docker and Docker. Docker. Oh, my God. Do- Docker, 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 please. <laughs> Don't you know I'm going like, fast? Um, like, even with the stats themselves, like, there's, uh, 
I just recently just got the 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 latest uh, survey, but like the the numbers, I'd still like to see it get past the one point eight two that we got during the time of the the steam machines, because mm-hmm. um, we had it pretty high back then. We were almost two percent at one point. Yeah. And, but you, uh, you 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 also have to realize though that like that doesn't necessarily account for the Steam community as a whole increasing in number because those percentages become skewed as time goes on. Absolutely, right? because it's a percentage of a percentage are getting what? the Steam survey. So like the odds are very slim that we're actually one getting thing, the surveys. One thing I am interested though is like, are they going to start putting the Steam Deck stats in here as well? Are they going to treat it as a separate platform? Oh, no, they, no, 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 no. Uh, they, no. They, they they don't get to play that game. No, that that's some bullshit right there. If they try to be like, no, this isn't the Linux. Look over there. Go fuck yourself, Valve. If you do that. Um, but well, also that's that's internal numbers, right? So maybe Valve doesn't want to reveal that. Well, I mean, this is this is these are all bullshit numbers anyway. These are Steam survey yeah. things. Valve's got real numbers that they don't make public yes. for fuck all reason. But I mean, one point one three percent doesn't sound like a lot until you bring out our brothers and sisters, uh, the suffering, the now suffering uh, kids, the Macintosh crowd, only sitting at two five six, and that's not going to be going up. I'm just not. So another thing I noticed, Nvidia still holds the top. 11 spots for video cards. That's still yes. crazy. One, you know, here's, here's the thing that's been bugging me for a while about the steam survey interface is they don't give you the ability to sort uh, video cards by Linux. We don't get to see what the most popular card on Linux is. We gotta, we kind of have to infer that from everything else. I don't know. Yeah. It's, this is a pet peeve. Well, I mean, uh, but, if you want a card that works, you're probably going to yeah, buy you're, NVIDIA. <laughs> I don't know. You can, you can still get a 580 and that'll run on most distributions these days. Well, what do you think about like the 1660 still being the, uh, is that just like the one that's available now that is still, you can get your hands I, on, even though it's I, I th- excruciatingly yeah, high price. Yeah. Even though it's like $600. Yeah. yeah. That's that's basically <laughs> what it is. When, when we're scraping the bottom of the barrel, when like seven thirties are retailing for like 75 bucks, like, you know, you know, it's bad. I'm, I'm still looking at the, uh, 30, 60, the, the most basic of bitches. And it, it's still 700 bucks. And that's not happening. There's no situation where I can live with myself. Like yeah. at yeah. all. Man. <laughs> we're, 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 we're just, kids uh, to feed. we're just, we're just hoping on Intel, man. Hopefully, hopefully Intel, Intel will fucking swoop Intel in with like in. the fucking I want real hero. Wrecking ball. Yeah. I want to be Ron Jeremy on a wrecking ball, baby. And just <laughs> that, that nasty. That nasty. Uh, give give me whities. a chance to buy a new video card, please. Hair everywhere, yeah. man. Um, yeah. So, what else do we have up? Oh, we got a couple of new games. This, oh, no, no, we got another no, one. We, yeah, we, we got another Steam update. Uh, there is a new beta that's out for November 2nd. Uh, this one seems to be focused on remote play. Uh, they are uh, moving. Uh, they added uh, OSX support for like M1 stuff. Um, they've improved uh, or they've added support for uh, VAPI, V-A-A-P-I, uh, hardware encoding. Uh, yes, for uh, for uh, Intel and AMD. Uh, they're doing they're improving uh, support for DMA buff pipe wire capture. Uh, and streaming up to 4K. So with all these pipe wire support things coming through the beta, I think I can make a fairly educated guess that SteamOS 3.0 is just pipes all the way because they want to leverage all like the desktop capture stuff for Steam streaming because why would they want to reinvent the wheel? Um, so yeah, that I mean, uh, that, that's going on. There's uh, remote play fixes, uh, some CEG games. Uh, yeah, you... You, uh, you got hit by that the last week, right? The You need to start the game up and then the console window fails to show up and then you start it again. I, I'm heartbroken. Valve, you've taken away my little mystery pop-up box. Like, right? What the fuck was that? Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> what the hell? Um, I mean, that that's interesting. The the thing about like Vappy, I mean, I understand why that is enabled. That's just a, overall... Vappy's not bad. The problem with it is you have to feed it such a redonkulous amount of bandwidth to get parity with like something like uh, NV encode or even Intel's Quark Sync. So, but that's going to be the only chance you're going to have to have a questionably less than optimal experience with remote play maybe, together. Maybe that's mm-hmm. where some of the custom silicon is going for uh, for the is, use. Well, it, fun fact. See, I didn't know what the DMA buff was to the to the pipe wire so i looked it up and i found out it was a framework <laughs> for streaming across different devices i was like oh well damn 
And I, then I did some more research and found out the framework was built into the kernel. And I was like, oh, never knew that. I was learning, learning. See, so, kids, you can always learn. Well, I mean, the pipe wire makes sense because the steam are going to be using Wayland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to be there. Welcome to our new Wayland-powered pipe wired future. So uh, I, I, I look forward to everyone getting to play with one. So, mm. Oh, yeah. Now. Now we have games because there is a new contender <laughs> in it, my it's, it's favorite boxing, genre. Right? My favorite genre of games, Jordan. It Boxing. Yeah, boxing. Dude, check it out. Bunch um, of- th- this is 100% my favorite genre. It's called I Need Something to Do Simulators. And Unpacking is delivering it with plushy pigs and plushy boxes. It's exactly Sailor what it Moon says on the tin. This <laughs> yeah. is from Witch Beam. As Jordan came out and he's like, yo, man, I remember that name. From the makers of Assault Android Cactus. It's right? uh it's a bit of a departure, you know. Oh, but you know But yeah, it's 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 it is a game where you have a bunch of boxes with shit in them and you need to unpack them. And let me tell you, as someone who spent the better part part of a week breaking down boxes and unpacking, <laughs> I really don't want to play a game about this. Dude, come on, man. I mean, this is like a really easy Tetris without the pressure of like timers and countdown clocks. No, th- this this is absolutely <laughs> for chicken. people who- How much would you pay now? Yeah. I I, I, I got Table Crow. Um, $300. I, I, don't know. Well, I, I guess my, my theory is this is for people who don't want, who really don't like cleaning their actual space and want to feel like they've accomplished something by cleaning. cleaning. That's- uh, <laughs> Do you, Cause, do you cause, okay hang on now do you let's see you don't need much to run this um do you believe that um niblet of uh delicious irony is like the uh neck beard nest playing this <laughs> yeah, yeah oh absolutely it's, it's it's like the same people who are like doing farming simulators or playing like uh rust or arc they are the yeah. well, we, oh, okay but what these are the same people that are playing like um you know civilization or um city skylines i'm just I'm just getting y'all and pissing everybody off right now. But yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. C- Civilization is not a game about having nothing to do. It's a game where you can s- end a turn and wait for the play by email server to hey, actually man. get back with your feedback. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> three days later. It, it sounds better. It's a better genre explanation than that, a genre called more, more free time than old man Vin. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I think this game I, is a little rage inducing. Yeah, if uh, yeah, I you, have to be you, clear. You, you sound a little angry, Ben. Maybe you should have some chicken. <laughs> no, man. No, man. Because here's what I want to know about unpacking first is, are you going to get like the missing boxes from the fucking like shady ass moving company? Is some shit going to show up broken? Yeah. <laughs> you, just some stuff is missing for eight mo- for like five years. And then you find it as mm-hmm. you're like moving out and you're like, right. what the fuck? But, uh, <laughs> I, I want some like weird shit to come out of the boxes. Too. <laughs> like skulls. Like, like, like I said, I don't want this game. Because I've lived that fucking life, I, I don't. I don't need yeah. that shit. I, I can't do it. I can't. Fair I enough. can't. <sighs> okay, yes, do as much as alluding to. Yeah, a rage chicken. A rage. Yeah, a rage chicken. Yeah. So happiness is fleeting. The struggle is endless. <laughs> you play in a platformer where you play as a chicken trying to make your great escape. So you gotta make your way through the levels using your mouse to uh, direct your a lot of your jumps. Um. This kind of reminds me of like, um, what's that? Is anyone else expecting zombies to show up? I mean, <laughs> like rage, rage kind of? chicken or, zombies or something, man. Yeah. Yeah. This is well, like I, the I, last I, chicken on earth. That's it. This, this is 100% getting over it with angry birds. Mm-hmm. Like it is bedded body <laughs> with, with like the fucking angry birds, like jumping mechanic, hundred percent, mm. which, you know, you know, if you're into rage games, it might be for you. I know I'm not. I don't know, man. Um, you know, I, I just I, I watched this trailer and it does come across as kind of like just your basic bitch physics platformer. But you got to listen. I'm not going to put it up on the stream, but the narration on this trailer is to be <laughs> yeah. just absorbed. You're like, ooh, how edgy are you trying to be? So hard. Oh, so man. hard. But hey, check it so out. Careful, I mean, I really, some... I really like the pixel art. This and plus, it's got rainbow chickens. Which, how much would you pay? It's five ninety nine, man. So this could be fun to play around with. It might be fun to stream. 
And uh, hey, uh, about this game, it, one of the features is it gives you an option to re-examine your life choices. So it doesn't take itself too damn seriously. And I'm, I'm glad to see that. Hey, I don't need a game to do that for me. I got plenty of opportunity to re <laughs> this, this This thing Oof. can run on a Core 2 Duo or an Athlon 64 X2 6400 Plus. Do I have? With a GTX 260. Like, look at that. I don't Crazy. know. AMD Crazy. didn't mark stuff very well. I have two S one twos over there. I don't know which one's which. But hey, go check it out. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? It looks like a masterpiece compared to this. Uh, oh Rex boy, play. yeah, yeah. <sighs> keep keep light. Keep keep away, man. Uh, so that Bruno is looking for those who left him. He wants to know the reason. Will he bring the light to them or no? Um, so here, here, here's the thing. It, it, it is like a, it's like an adventure platformer, I guess, similar to Braid. I get a bit of a Super Mario meets uh, Five Nights at Freddy's vibe from it. Um, and I, I get that you're trying to maintain a level of mystique with your game, but please do actually Look try to physics. explain what the fuck. Wow. Yeah, what the fuck is actually happening? Like, please explain that in your advertising copy. Oh man, that yeah. that is that is some uh, that is some UE4 motion blur right there. Well, Boy. here's the one thing I do want to bring up. Um, we are streaming at 60 frames per second uh, quite handily. This is a very very um, one might say cinematic trailer. Um, I uh, what do I got to say about this? It, uh, are you a connoisseur of minimalism? Uh, I don't know, man. This like the physics again. The physics look <laughs> the physics that they're showing off in the trailer. <laughs> Bedrock. He sinks. Bed he drags. Rough. Lightning block and whatever's going on. There's a log. He slides. This. Okay. Yeah. Dun, dun, and then the dun, house dun. just fucks can, off. Can, can, you, yeah. can you loop yeah. that so we can do like, what is love? Dun, uh, I dun, probably dun, could. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. The house just flipping for some reason. Sandy, you know, do, like, do you want black and white, spooky Teddy Ruxpin? No. No, oh, No, this looks like, like, this looks like, uh, kind of like what Jordan said, Five Night or... Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. This is Four Nights at Teddy's. Yeah, Four Nights at this Teddy's the, mixed with no, like some is, Odd World, like this, weirdness. This is, like I could see some Odd five, World. This this is Five Nights behind the dumpster at Freddy's, man. <laughs> like <laughs> Teddy behind the dumpster <laughs> every Friday. Um, All right. Um, one game update before we get out of here. Check yeah. this out. Um, super limited. Um, we. Yeah, they sent us some review copies of this way back and we played it. And this, this was new. This was a fun fucking take on, um, like the physics platform, 3d dip. You know, it's where you in big and D big and things just to make them fit with it. You go watch the trailer. It was a fun, fucky experience. They've added multiplayer. They've added oh, no. multiplayer up to you. It- you with 12 friends and dual wielding, dual wielding fire extinguishers, Jordan. Oh man, I'm I'm excited for this. Uh, <laughs> John, can can you make your uh, your enemies like huge and shit? Yeah, th- this was so we 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 had if you if you're unaware of what Superliminal is, uh, there was a tech demo that Unity released forever ago where people were making shit larger. This is the full ass game. the The multiplayer of this is just a race though. Like they give you all the challenges, and now you're just trying to get to the end before the rest of everyone else. I, you know, I don't know. Did, did you, did you, what what do you think about the chess piece aesthetic for like the other players? I'd say go for it, man. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I, the game was well done. I mean, this was, a, oh, yeah. it, it was a new, at least to me, concept of like gameplay mechanic. I'm like, I, I get it. I get it. And then, you know, I ran at the moment. I'm like, all right, this game's smarter than I am. So, uh, it, it had some issues, uh, the Linux version, the Vulcan version. I mean, even to this date, this is something I want to point out. This multiplayer update, currently it's 50% off. They haven't rolled out the I multiplayer th- update to the Linux version yet. <laughs> that ain't going to stop us. Nope. Nope. <laughs> also, Proton, baby. Linux version still got that delay in the cursor where you turn it and you're like, there it goes. I mean, it makes it very challenging. I mean, it's very much a game to get into the game itself, but I didn't want really to give it a mention because um, like 12 people in a race, I mean, this could be our uh, thinking persons. Uh, what is it? Where's the game? Where they Speed runners? Fall off shit. Um, uh, uh, fall guys? Yeah. yeah, that one. Oh yeah, fall guys. Yeah. So we might, might even play around with it in the after shows for a little bit. So there you go. Fall Guys on Silas Ibn sounds like a good, fun time. Coming up next, we worship the devil, and we also take part in the Godot Game Jam. Go, Godot! 
Welcome back to the news cycle. We just cycle. finished the Steam News. We yeah. got to do this more yeah. than once? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like it's a, it's like a myth circular? cycle. Circular? Circular? What kind of it's show like, yeah, are you running, cycle. man? Damn. <laughs> Be- Beowulf, man. We're, we're the Beowulf of Linux gaming podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you love what we do here, you can always check us out on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. And right. uh, you guys Love. can donate. T- t- Take take an initiative. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah, yeah. You can you can get some cool stuff by becoming a Patreon. You like can you we get, get Beowulf? Access to her? A, a, can we get a cluster? Wait, a, I don't even know how that work. There's a joke in there. I uh, a, 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 clu- a cluster of Beowulf. <laughs> is, is, is that like a blessing of unicorns? I, or like, a, how a can we mix crows? Beowulf and Patreons? And none of that came out. Like, like no, I just seen a bunch of like, Beowulf just, Trion. Yeah, it's like a bunch of like got to be Grendel about it. No. <laughs> it, it, it's it's my new Transformers OC. But yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Like Sandrew mentioned, become a Patreon. You get access to the Discord channel. You get access to the pre-pre-super shows in where you can listen to myself, Sandy, and Ven discuss home improvement for an hour <laughs> uh, before uh, before going live uh, talking about Linux games. And if you don't think that sounds amazing, because it's not. That's, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, not. listen, it, it is an extra hour of content. We never said it was good content. Okay. Just that okay. It was content. You're just trying to sell them one hour of content. How about this? How about we give you four hours of content and podcast oh, format so you can just drop it on your uh, Diamond Rio MP3 player than your vintage MP3 collection because you that, collect old shit. That, that's, that sounds like eating an st- entire stick of butter to me, man. You can put it on your iPod. Yeah. Butter? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't taste Tell me good. more. I'm sure if you ordered an iPod on eBay, it would come covered in butter. Like, oh, yeah, these, these <laughs> days for sure. Um, but yeah, um, we, we also have a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. Um, you can Did go we sell cover. Butter? We should. God damn it. We, we, need, we need LGC brand affiliated challenge butter. <laughs> yeah, but we got we got um, all the T-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, hoodies, fanny packs, masks, all that shit. Go cover yourself in LGC merch. We'll go out in public and... Behold the confused looks of people asking why you have a use me penguin on your shirt. Uh, we got, um, we got uh, wish lists. We got, um, if you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, master of the support tab. Uh, hey, we want to give studio. Uh, empty a big shout out for the cover art last week. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot to empty for uh fail to the king. It was quite good. Um, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, wish list. We got we got them. Ben has one for the studio. I have one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. Sandy doesn't have one. Fuck uh, no, he doesn't. Too bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, get something off the wish list. You get to send us a note. We got to read it on the interwebs. Uh, if you send some stuff to Ven, you get your glowing name written on the glowy board of blocked by Ven's head. That's awesome. It's I always wanted to have one of these boards, man. Now do. Yeah. It glows and now shit. Now you do. Yeah. Yeah. The dream, <laughs> Life the dream is, is complete. Real. The Where do you go from is, there? <laughs> the best thing is, is somebody's over at the house and coming like, so what's that about? I'm like, I don't know. It's just, like, uh, it's, it's my hit list. It's just a yeah. thing. <laughs> Right. I took a job at the post office. What? Yeah. Um, we, 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 got, we got some people that we got to thank. Uh, they oh, are yes. subbing to us on Twitch. Twitch is a great way to support us because you can get notifications when we go live. You can even get you access, also get to, access to our Discord. Oh, look yeah, at that. As, yeah. as, 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 I, as I was saying, I, I had it locked and loaded. Ben, right. I, I know this. Hey, man, I was, um, I was just trying to help you. I was reverberating, man. A little delay mm, on yeah, it. Yeah, of the week. Yeah. Eek, eek, yeah. But we got we to gotta thank uh, our resubs, Linux Nuru, Don M, Basil, 1XA, and Nubbin. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, it's good stuff. Uh, we appreciate any of the support. Uh, if you don't want to help us monetarily, Retweet the show, uh, share it, bring the bell on YouTube, all that Retweet shit. Retweet it on the Facebooks. Mm-hmm. Meta. Wait, the it's metas. called meta now, right. you ignorant slut. Yeah, it's it, get meta. Okay. Yeah, it's too, it's too meta. All right, all right, let's 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 <laughs> get into this news segment. Sandy, oh, you need yeah. to go. We got some we got some you got, pretty big it's news. Time for you to we go. got the the Go Godot jam number two coming at you. So I don't know, man. Got, Sandy can I ask you a personal question. Okay, ask me a personal. Question. Have you ever looked at a set of brass knuckles and be like, "Hot damn, that'd make a sweet controller." Yes, every okay. day, right. every day, I thought that to myself. Right. That's it's super and, ergonomic. You know, exactly because this, so this uh, Go Godot Jam uh, number two, they're coming at you hard. That's why they did the the brass knuckle look this time around. So this time they got a whole bunch of events lined up. Uh, from the 1st of November to the 5th of December is the whole festival altogether. From the 19th to the 30th of November is the actual game jam in itself. And the 12th to the, or the 1st to the 4th of December is the voting for all the different games. 
And then the fifth will be the wrap up mm. for the whole event. And uh, this is a pretty good, this is going to be a pretty big event. I've already donated to the event. Um, I'm always excited with any sort of game jam. I see one on the November 6th, man. They're going to have one for making three. Do you think we should dare ever bring Brick Simulator into the third dimension? Absolutely. (laughs) Yes, bring. We need to bring Brick Simulator into the sixth dimension. Mm -hmm. Three dimensions aren't good enough. Brick Simulator VR. This is throwing bricks at motherfuckers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, but... So, uh, like, like, uh, like last year, this isn't so much as a game jam as uh, an online conference with a semi-attached game jam that will give you the tools to create a game. Maybe even by the end of the conference, 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 conference. at which point <laughs> you will be judged. Oh, no. Uh, so if you, if you're going to sign up for it, 50% of the proceeds are going to Godot, 40% is going to pay the presenters and contributors, and the remaining 10% is going to the prize pool. So if you want to make some money off of your Godot game, uh, make it a good one. Super maybe, sweet. maybe, maybe attend some of these talks and seminars and gain the skills to do so. That's right. Hey, I know you, I am. Or, or you could just be a scrub and use uh, easy RPG. No, man, you will live and die <laughs> by the sword. Easy RPG has got a new version out. They absolutely do. What is it? It's a project that aims to recreate the free, you know, it's a free cross platform version of um, that other thing called RPG. RPG Maker. Maker. But hey, couple of new updates in this and by a couple i mean 160 issues have been closed with 260 pull requests merged this list goes on for days but but i would like to point out that vsync is now enabled by default for the ps vita progress hot damn hot damn have you ever thought about like messing around with because like this is where i would go now uh, all this is going to be in our show notes, blog.easyrpg.org. If you want to play the home game right now, you want to be impatient about just fucking around with one of these RPG makers. I'm like, d- 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 does that road just end to darkness? Or I, I mean, you you end up making Dragon Quest because that's the type of game that this game, this, <laughs> yes. this game is. You, 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 you can make any RPG you want as long as it's Dragon Quest. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, like uh, I've dabbled with the RPG makers throughout like my whole life. Like back from the days of 95 all the way up to was it MV was the last one I tried out. Uh, They have MZ now. Um, But yeah, like easy RPG. When I first came to Linux, this this was uh, my go to because I had a couple of old projects that I wanted to bring over to Linux because I couldn't run any of the uh, 2000, 2003 games that I made on Linux. So this was my method. But they also have their own editor, so you can even build your own game, even if you're not porting your old game. So I was reading through the notes. They have like some interesting, like you you can run your game directly from the zip file. And I was like, why is that a thing? Yeah. Nintendo Switch, because apparently that's yep. a thing. And it's like one of the yep. workarounds that they've had to do to make it run. But yeah, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay away from this for my own good and for the Internet's good, because nothing good to come from that. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's 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 always good because like this is this is in line with the people who are like re-engineering like Flash and shit. Right? Oh yeah, got you got you to maintain compatibility because like the rest of the t- tooling has moved on by. So it's it's good to al- allow all of those games and a lot of people just got their got their starts like Sandy just making games in yeah. RPG Maker. So good good for preservation. Fair indeed. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Devil. Yes, we're talking about El Diablos. Well, Devolution X, the open source Diablo. Reimplementation. Uh, version 130 is out and it comes with some neat stuff. Support for the Lepus, uh, multiplayer support for a bunch of handhelds because, you know, love playing Diablo on my 3DS uh, or PS Vita or yeah, Nintendo, remote for 3DS matter. together. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, yeah. the real cool thing, though, is they have some better nat punching. They're implementing a tool called Zero Tier for uh, network discovery so you can play multiplayer games a lot more easily. No no port forwarding involved. Uh, they also added a dash dash hellfire switch. If you want to be playing the uh, expansion to Diablo developed by Sierra online by no one involved with the original Diablo. Mm. Uh, so yeah, this it's good. The project is chugging along. Like it's all, it's all like feature complete. So you can play through most of Diablo, but now this is improvements, uh, bug fixes, adding support for additional platforms. And, and yeah, just like quality of lights, bleh, quality of life stuff. So I'm learning so, about this open stuff stuff. Uh, so I, I can just download this and play the game. Well, you're gonna need a copy of the OG Diablo, but you can buy that on the Blizzard website, or you can get it on GOG, right? You, you can get it on GOG too. Like, yep, yeah. It, 
I think this even you works can, with a demo if you can track that down. So yeah. Uh, or if although you still I don't have the that... old installation CD hmm. <laughs> somewhere. So Di- I do, but Diablo is kind of like see, a, uh, there you go. Diablo. Oh, point click. Yeah. What, point yeah point click it's kind of like a Starcraft knockoff. Yeah. Uh, there, except, except this one does have a cow level. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is warrior Kings. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys, I've never played warrior Kings back in the day. Um, but yeah, like uh, they, this is a re-implementation of just the whole system. And uh, so far, like you have to do some compiling yourself. You got to do a little C make, but nothing wrong with that. Um, it actually runs pretty well. Like it's, uh, it's a real time system. It's very much like, uh, I would say, yeah, a mix of Starcraft slash, uh, what was that other one? Um, Age of Empires. Yeah, okay. I would say more Age of Empires sort of uh, gameplay style. Um, but yeah, like I built, uh, I did CMake on it. I played it. Uh, there's not a lot of features. Like there's a demo video there that shows you a know, lot man. of features. I don't know. I'm looking at basic. this. I'm looking at this. And I, Jordan, I think you got to do like three CMakes on it. Well, so there, there's there's the problem. He's got build instructions for Ubuntu at the bottom. Uh, yeah. Apparently, cross-platform CMake is a little difficult for some folks. Uh, so uh, they he needs you to copy a bunch of the uh, stub headers and include files and stick them in the uh, build directory before you run the make file. I mean, to, ben, ben, to your point, like, yeah, at least he's trying to provide he's something. He's tried, right? and he's honest about it. He's, he, he didn't run it. He's like, Linux is stupid. I don't like it. And don't <laughs> use command lines. You should be able to click next and compile everything. No, he's like, hey, man, I'm not really familiar with Linux, but here, here, here I got it. I did, I did my best. Mm-hmm. And it's on GitHub, so if you want to make that, if you want to fix that CMake file. Yeah, go help him out. Uh, you can make a pull request. So this yeah. old thing is back, but what they this, get, yeah, this old gem? No, I wouldn't call it a gem. More like a wind. A wind. Yeah, open MW, open more winds. Not 4.7 is out. We haven't heard from these guys in a good long while, mostly because the game is kind of done for the most part. It's uh, not exactly but, under heavy development, man. Yeah, yeah but... Um, but yeah, uh, they, they've they added some new stuff to this release. Uh, the big ones include um, some underhood changes, like a new lighting system, no RTX, so sorry, Brad, Whoa. and an over-the-shoulder boulder holder camera. Um, the, gr- the ground cover gets a nice performance bro- boost now that they have a proper working subsystem. Uh, like, perform- like, double frame rate performance boost. It's pretty substantial. And you can now take advantage of the fact that your tw- computer is 20 years newer and more powerful than anything the original developers had ever considered would exist. And you can increase the draw distance. Look at this horror NC story. This bar. is what I wanted to get to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks like Gotta get up to get down. Trying to give me nightmares. Hey, are you okay? What'd you tell us? If you're okay. Dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, just playing around with this. Looking at this. My first thought was like, hey, come on. Let's get some, uh, let, let, let's uh, moral win together. I want some multiplayer. Basically, I just want to show up in like PvP and kill Pedro and never play again. But <laughs> um, I do got to say the new lighting system absolutely looks the business. I didn't expect to see like, ooh, oh, wow. You have definitely done some work on that. And I want to point out that the NPCs now will do their best to avoid you while giving you the stink eye while they're walking by. Excellent. Yeah. So just scary. like in real life, hmm? get yeah, yeah, yeah. walking by. The Ooh. lighting looks really good that they yeah, showed off in the demo. Like the lighting looks very good. Oh yeah. <laughs> they showed off the, the Ferps with a thousand metal heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, just yeah. When, when, at two frames a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when, when, when you're trying to render that many bodies on screen at screen oh, yeah. time, it's a, uh, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Oh Yeah. It's no, but there's really there's a lot of quality of life improvements to the to, to oh, the for sure. overall graphics and everything. So I was quite impressed with it. Mm. In, indeed, uh, there's also they're also continuing to make uh, improvements to the editor, so you can make your own more win content, which is very nice. Yes, pretty tight. Pretty yes. tight. Now, so yeah. I wasn't even going to bring this up. But we were going to mention this, but you know what? I put it in our Discord earlier this week, and um, I was like, hey, there's a thing that's kind of neat. 
And uh, of course, uh, Strider jumped in. He's like, you know, people are going to try to game on that. It's stupid. You cannot game on that. And here we fucking are. So we're going to talk about it. Possibly gaming on it. I'm talking about the GPD Pocket 3, a fully featured modular and utility. Well, I mean, this is like a fucking Swiss army knife. The more you read about it, you're like, kind of fucking want one, man. RS-232 right? USB KVM ISDN. What is it? i7 1195G7 16 gigajoules PCIe M.2. It's got the Wi-Fi's, Thunderbolt 4's. It's got cameras, unibody chassis. How much would you? Here's the problem, Jordan. This thing's going to cost like nine, no, like 1200 bucks, right? Right. Something like that. It's got, it's got to be incredibly expensive, you know, touchscreen, hot swap, KVM, all Look that shit. That, like next to a standard mobile, like yeah, not 0.7 kilograms. Looks, oh, like next to the blazer and like, oh, well, that's just eight it's, inch it's, display. It's, it's, it's 1920 by 1200, 10 point touch. Um, you know, not a gaming, but look at that RS-232. Like, God damn it. That's pretty yeah, cool, hot, man. Hot, hot swappable RS-232. There's a KVM module, so you can just use this as a keyboard and mouse. Yes. Clearly, clearly this is designed for people who work in a network operations center. Uh, but. like, yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're in, instead of carrying around the fucking cart with like this giant ass monitor that's Dude, 20 years the old. The monitor's convertible yeah. too. You can flip it around. Yeah. You can, oh, you can so flip it around. Nice there's a stylus you can write on it. Like, yeah, if you're, if you're someone who's working in a data center, like I don't even work in a data center and I fucking want one of those. Jesus what, Christ. What's the GPU in this thing? What does that, uh, it's the, uh, Intel, Intel integrated. Yeah, I know that, but which one? What? It's the, uh, you, you're gonna, you're gonna make me fucking Google yes, the fucking I seven. Yep. <laughs> <aren't> you? <laughs> you, you mother. Oh, it's, oh, it's XC. Oh, it 6- oh, it says on the fucking page. I'm an idiot. XC sure. graphics, 96 EU. Okay. Now, where this gets very interesting is, uh, I was joking about the price. You can get one of these starting at 650 watt stinky caches. That one will awesome. come with the, uh, the Pentium though, not the i7. Oh uh, no. So not, not, not as much Shit. horsepower, but, but again, like it's, it's a pretty slick package, all things considered. And if you just, especially if you have a bunch of headless boxes, you just need to like plug in. Check some it's stuff. just dope as hell is what it is, man. Yeah. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. Like I was even I'm, I'm, looking at, it, I was like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh!" I you, definitely want. It. Hey, look at it this way: um, it, if you really want to confuse your kids and be like, "Hey, I got you a new laptop for school," <laughs> like I can't use this, you're like, "Oh, well, I guess I'll have to use it then." See, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's we, your we, loophole. We, we, yeah, we we have, we have iPad noted. at home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, ISDN module. Where's you got now? Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, it's time for the inverted ziggurat. Man, Ven Ven hasn't gone to that part in White Plume Mountain, but it's coming. Woohoo! Welcome back to the Cheerquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Ziggurat 2 by Milkstone Studios. Uh, you might be asking yourself what the Cheerquisition is. It's the motherfucking Cheerquisition. It's where we take a game, test it on a bunch of Linux distributions with a bunch of varying hardware, tell you how it works. Give us your opinion. Give us or give you our opinion oh, wrong based on ah. the ultimate, the ultimate scale of lawn chairs. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, Ziggurat 2, first person shooter, uh, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about twenty eight ninety nine Canadian. I meant to ask you how much it was in the U.S. I don't. I didn't look. Uh, my psychic um, ability is still at twenty four ninety nine. Twenty five. Twenty four ninety nine. Yes. Cool. Um, what is it? Ziggurat is back, and now it's even better. Use powerful weapons and spells to break through hordes of enemies and explore labyrinthine dungeons in this hectic roguelike FPS while you improve your skills and discover new equipment. We got to thank Milkstone for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. So speaking of poopoos. How'd it run, Sandy? Oh, you forgot the most uh, uh, the integral part. You got to do it in three minutes or less, or I'm cutting your ass off. Oh, ah, no pressure. Okay. Sandy, Sandy no doesn't pressure. have that much. Here we stuff go. Written, Let's do so. this. All right. So, running on the Pop OS 2104, uh, 64-bit, obviously. Uh, running the Intel i7 9700F with eight cores, the NVIDIA G uh, GeForce RTX 20 uh, 2060. Uh, it ran amazing out of the box. Like, right out of the box, uh, did the, both the Vulcan and the OpenGL version, ran great. Uh, obviously, the Vulcan version ran way, way better. Um, I tested my game pads. I got the, the Logitech F720, the Steam controller, and my uh, DualShock 4. 
Uh, all of them worked fine, except for with the uh, the F710. Uh, when you switch it over to X input, that's when uh, I started having some connectivity issues. But I think that just could have been my positioning. It has nothing to do with it. Um, the the one thing I found kind of bland was the font for a lot of the damage. It felt kind of out of place when I would see the the damage pop up on the uh, with a lot of the attacks. So I was just like, eh, you know, uh, the soundtrack is nice. Nothing amazing there. Uh, it's still it's still enjoyable, but it's just nothing really to write your mother to. Um, I never played the first game. Uh, so this was kind of my intro to, uh, the franchise, but, uh, I noticed that there was some angry carrots at the beginning. So that was, uh, that was pretty funny. It kind of gave me the whole vibe of, uh, you know, you're just a student at a, a maid school and they're like, guess what? You're going to fight some carrots. What? <laughs> you know? So I had some fun with that. I really like the roguelike aspect to it. Uh, I had some um, sort of Borderlands vibes from this, like a, almost like a fantasy Borderlands vibes. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Like this definitely, I would definitely uh, buy this for my kids. Uh, it definitely had like a ages 10 and up sort of feel to it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to give it three chairs. Good stuff. So on Fedora 34, 64 bit, because I haven't upgraded to 35 yet with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080i, launches out of the box. Steam overlay says it's given me 70 FERPs at UHD on Vulkan, but my eyes do not believe that frame timing is poo poo. 1080p is gold though, smooth as butter, getting like, I don't know, 200 some odd FPS. So. Yeah, don't don't run it at UHD if you're running it on Vulcan. I didn't test it on the uh, OpenGL renderer. Um, it looks like a better version of the first game, which is to be expected, considering it is a better version of the first game. The soundtrack is OK. I forgot it was there after a while. And the controls are what you would expect on an FPS. I know Sandy is a big fan of playing these things on controller. Why? No, don't do it. Do. All right. So fun wise, they've uh, kept the serious Sam style horde shooting from the previous game, which is good. Uh, and they've also taken the Hades approach of having you suffer your way to an easy mode. Uh, the more you use your various wands, amulets, and staves, the better they get. Uh, you can upgrade your dudes over time and get better and better so that your little pew pew ring guardian leviosa wand will actually murder some people for a change. Um, and they've also added some, uh, parkour elements. So the levels have gotten a lot more ver verticality. Um, definitely a lot of progress, uh, past the first game, which is nice. Uh, and for what it is, it's certainly enjoyable. Um, it's got like, a, there's a lot of more choices too. uh, the wizards you use, the powers they get, the weapons you use. Um, there's even a mission select element. So lots, lots more choices in general, but it's still missing that one crucial feature multiplayer online multiplayer. The game gets super monotonous after a while when it's just you killing shit. And it would be fun to be able to bring a friend around along. And I'm not talking about like huge death match. I'm just talking about like one other person I think would go a long way to improving the longevity of this game. Uh, so all in all, um, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it two chairs just because it does tend to drag, uh, as time goes on, but it's still entertaining enough. All right. Over here in Debian 11 land, check it out on a Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigajoules of RAM, NVMEs, and a 2060 NVIDIA card. That's me in the upper left hand screen. Oh boy, 72C, but not doing much on the CPU. I'm playing it at 1080p. That's how I live these days. Options for OpenGL and Vulkan right out of the box. I like to see that always, always. Now, both of them work without issue. Now, again, I only played it at 1080p because I was doing some capture and some streaming and all that. Uh, full screen windowed mode, no problems. Controllers work, but good fucking luck with that, man. I that just plugged that in, and moved around, that. died real quick. Yeah. Gets about 70 bazillion frames at 1080p. I have it limited to 90 just so my 2060 would shut the fuck up because it was like, like that 200 and something like that. Uh, pretty decent. Now, when it comes to fun, this this is a live die FPS. That that's what it is. I mean, good on you lot. You kept the evil carrots in. You get bonus points for me on that. Now, Ziggurat is like the original Ziggurat. It was an arena shooter that controlled like an FPS from the nineties. Ziggurat two, on the other hand, is an arena shooter that controls like an FPS from the nineties. You kill some baddies. You get some perks. You get killed to death. You repeat. 
Now there is a leveling system of sorts. So, you know, I could see people coming back for that. Now, as far as the gameplay, it really is a basic FPS run and gun with a side of dash. I enjoyed the dash mechanic and you're forced to use it. Now the baddies, they kind of have some laser lock on, man. So old strats are new again. You know, you kite everybody to one side of the arena, shoot them up, run to the other side of the arena, repeat that, and you're pretty good. Now, roguelike first person shooters, it's kind of a hard nut to crack because you got to sell me on the FPS action alone because I'm going to be that guy. And Zig 2, while well, the combat's on par with kind of like Immortal Redneck, if you remember that one. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's not necessarily a good one. So, you know, I'm curious, uh, you know, I was curious to listen to what these two had to say about the roguelite system, because you know, I felt like you can take it or leave it. I found myself clicking through it maybe too quickly, because one time I fucked myself pretty hard, because it was one benefit with a very, very steep penalty, and I died very shortly after. Then I started reading what I was getting. But hey, man, it's a pretty game. But it's kind of like a half and half drink when both sides are just kind of meh. I wasn't blown away by it. Twenty four ninety nine, gentlemen. I'm gonna say two chairs. What's our verdict and final thoughts on this? Definitely an improvement over the first one. Like oh, everything yeah. that the first game, everything the first game does, this game does better. Which we is were what talking you about on a technical sequel. level alone, because at that time we were all me and you were running bulldozers. Yeah, it was. No, I, I was on a Thuban. Thuban. Okay, I had a bulldozer. Yeah. You had a Thuban, and um, in those days, those dark days for AMD, man. Nothing would yeah. take advantage of the eight cores of my bulldozer, except this game. This was the one game that was just like hammering it which I thought was yeah. technically impressive back in the day. Um, it, do you get what I'm saying when I say it's like, it's kind of interesting with the roguelike kind of interesting with the FPS, but that's so, just like really weird genre to get right. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, th- I think it's more for people who sort of want that versus style of gameplay without necessarily having, having to play with randos because it constantly changes up, right? It's not like a level that you can uh, go through and memorize the enemy patterns and whatnot. You, you have to just have like really solid fundamentals and you really need to be good at like shooters in general to be successful at these games. So I, I get, I get why people would be into them. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think this does a pretty good job as far as like FPS roguelikes go. I would, I would hold Ziggurat at like the top of the pile. No, Like I do intended. feel like this is a, marked improvement like and i'm not selling it short on like the fps combat in the game like they, they force you to get good get fast use your dash yeah use, use the parkour yeah because you you will you will get corner fucked so easily in this game oh, yeah. like th- ev- everything is designed to trap you and you're like ah, oh, i can i can just go back and forth back and forth and the level the levels are like no you can't you gotta <laughs> yeah no yeah no so, like uh, it's it's uh, like in terms of uh like I can't compare it to the first game, obviously, because I never played the first game. But like, uh, just in terms of like a lot of the functionality of the game, I enjoy a lot of the functionality and uh, a lot of the RPG aspects to it. The uh, when it comes to the actual rogue, like, like Jordan said, I can kind of understand why they use the rogue, like, because when you have games where it's like you have the set levels, and especially if it's uh, there's multiplayer in the game you're going to have those people that just like speed run through the level and they're leaving people behind. You know what I mean? And uh, this, this kind of alleviates that. Like if they had multiplayer, which I agree with Jordan, they should have had multiplayer with this game. Um, th- It would definitely add a whole new level to uh, a lot of, a lot of the gameplay break down a lot of the monotony. Um, But yeah, like I would, and then plus one, they got to fix the default setting for the mouse. Oh boy. The mouse sensitivity. So yes. One, 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 one thing that just popped in my head. Um, the movement in this reminds me very much of 2016 doom. And mm-hmm. I found myself really missing glory kills. I'm like, come on, oh, let me right. just rip a little baby carrot in half. Oh, come dude, on. That could be a thing. Yeah. Milkstone, you did a good job on this and much like the original cigarette, it found its audience. And I think this will too. Indeed. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, coming up next, we got to scrape the bottom of the barrel for the hate mail, so Ooh. enjoy some YouTube comments. <laughs> Welcome back. This is your favorite part and our favorite part. It's the hate mail. 
So if you guys have any, uh, you guys want to get in contact with us, you know, you want to send us keys. So for devs, there's uh, some pretty detailed instructions that you need to go through and read first before you start uh, sending keys. Uh, if you're doing a crowdfunding campaign, make sure it has a Linux build. And per running it through Proton doesn't mean it's a Linux build. Yeah, Let's it does. Just get Shut up. Straight. According to Steam. <laughs> no. Well, it's Steam Play verified. Steam Deck verified, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, you say that. We've already had a, one developer like send us keys to a Proton yeah. game. Yeah. D- so, yeah, dig oh my God. <laughs> So don't do it again. Uh, so select the show that you want to get in touch with, uh, with that nice little topic slider. Put in your name, put in your email, put in the subject, and then send us your message. Let us know what we did wrong or what we did right, and we'll go from there. You can do it. Tap that send button, fam. That's how we get your communications now. No no, no links in the email, though. Spam golem will eat you. Oh, you can try. I mean, it's hilarious. About every three months, I remember that we have that service, and I'll go and log in. And some of you, man, the tenacity. <laughs> spam or not. Hammer on it, because it tells me whether or not you've been identified. Your IP address is a spam bot, and some of you, not spam bots. Just bad at reading. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yosef. Uh, yes, Yosef. Uh, he's talking about the decks. He says, I have had so many issues using the Stream Deck UI, not the Steam Deck. Mm. Uh, it has stopped me from using Linux to stream, which is sad, lol. Why, why, why would you laugh about being sad, man? Because I am Pagliacci, the laughing clown. No. Oh, well, I or mean. Or clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah the go. laughing. So, oh, damn it, you... <laughs> <laughs> you rebel, laughing clown. Ah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Rami, both of you. Um, <laughs> you're, you're welcome for that yes. listening audience. Uh, stream decks. I use one. Yeah. See? Can't you tell? I dropped it just like I really do use one. I got one down here. But you know what? So what? The out-of-the-box experience. Now, this is something I see people do a lot with, like, audio interfaces, webcams, and stuff like that. Like I go to the website and I don't see drivers to use no stream decks, kind of a special case, but like audio interfaces, your webcams, you just plug them in. You got kernel support. This, this does precisely fucking all when you plug it in. And there's really like two ways to go about it. One is a particularly dodgy uh, stream deck UI. It's like it's Python kludge. That does work. I used it for a minute, but it messes up window focus. What you want to do is what I'm going to be trying to do is with my new, um, Raspberry Pi Zero W2, because uh, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 back here in the rack, uh, that works as a server for the Stream Deck. And it's not just um, like OBS you can use, but like lighting equipment, RGB stuff, anything you can name, you can put on the deck and you can serve it. It's called BitFocus Companion. It's open source. It's free. There's tons of modules for things like you, you learn about programs going through that. That is the recommended way to do it. Um, Jordan, have you ever thought about getting like a uh, switcher or stream deck thing? I got, I got one on the wish list. Okay, um, they're, they're stupidly overpriced for what they are. They they they, they, they are. I, I I was looking at them. I'm like, do I want like the 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 three button one seems just Pointless. a little shy, useless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm looking at like the the six button one, and it's like, <laughs> oh, that's two hundred dollars. Well, we'll see. Let's put that on the wish list and see if someone else wants to buy what, it for me because I don't want to buy it for me. Elgato release a one button. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, that's just like the Stack Overflow con- keyboard, the Control C Control yeah. B. <laughs> oh. Sandy, have you ever thought about getting some deck in your life? Uh, every day, every day, I want to get some deck in my life. Mm. Every day, but uh, I don't know. Like it's like I don't control any sort of like uh system where it warrants me to in. Outside of doing LGC, Bitch, I don't do any that streaming. That has not stopped most people. They're like, I'm going to start Twitch streaming. I need to get a Steam Deck for what? I, I, it's got to be on the desk next to my microphone arm so people know that I stream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, a re- I'm a real streamer. That's right. You know, I got a Stream Deck. But no, now, it's now like I, I've never I, I wonder, needed could, to warrant one. Could you get like a carton of eggs and like paint one to look like a Stream Deck and like stick it next? <laughs> It's you know LEDs what? I'll do it. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, 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 cause like you don't actually need one. You just need to look like you have one, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like, the... even if, even if it's like, uh, like I would, even if I did want to get one, I would still like, 
uh, I would watch the videos. Like I, would, well, I'm pretty sure Ven put out a video for the Stream Deck and how to get it set I, up. I've on done Linux. multiple yeah. ones for the Stream Deck setting yeah. up on Linux, but more importantly, a completely free option is I showed you how to set up uh, using OBS WebSockets with any mobile yes. device on Android. Completely free. You can use tablets. It, you can use your phone. Isn't there? Isn't there a roll your own stream deck as well? Like you can put together with the pie and the touch screen. We talked about that. Yeah, you could, about if, that on but Google. that would probably end up costing more than um, a stream deck. Maybe. Because because the thing is, the thing is, as soon as you start buying like OLED displays, man, mm. <laughs> real ones instead of just a cheap LCD with a touch screen. Mapped I mean, onto what's it? wrong with that? For if if you're just trying to cook a dirty stream deck. Exist. No. Like when you're trying to get per part stuff, like no one's built one ah. like that. That's what I'm saying. Ah. Ah. Okay. Here's another idea. Get a spare number pad. That's what I used for a long time. Just use number pad, map OBS. You're done. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, when, you, when you're done talking about stream dicks, uh, I'm going to talk about, man, take a shot at that name. Uh, I, I was thinking about that. Jitong, Gaiton, Gaiton. Okay. What, 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 what is the umlaut on the edu? This is a. Yeah, so eh? Gaetan. Uh, the Canadian would know that. Eh? No, we 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 use the we use the uh, agu for that. Ah, I thought it was the floppy heads. Um, no. now talking about audio, uh, they write, "Hey, man, thanks for the review." And we're talking about I did a thing for everyone. Doesn't matter what you're into, but you want to get some audio in Linux, and I thought I'd do like a very generic uh, the Scarlet Sapphire because that's another thing people want to buy. <laughs> like I get that. That's what the YouTubers say to get, and. He's taking me for the review. Good to see more and more audio interfaces Linux compatible. That's the thing. You're going to have to try really hard to find one that doesn't a USB interface. It's class compliant. You plug it in. It just works. Um, he ended up with the Auden Evo 4. Worked almost out of the box on oh, Sandy, your favorite distribution, Popos. Poopos? Pops. Yeah. Poops. Had to Poops. tweak some UDEV rules and create a Pulse Audio profile. You know what? That's not bad. I wouldn't even feel like I'd done anything if I... It's like, meh, all right. I don't, I don't know. Doing, doing that on pop, did you have to type in, I, please do what I say and destroy my system before no, you were able to no, do that? Or, no, uh... <laughs> well, you know, according to Linus, you know, not that one, the squeaky one, uh, that yeah. would probably involved opening a terminal, therefore completely destroying your entire gaming. You know, as a gamer, you wouldn't be capable of doing it in the first place. Oh, You'd be stuck. Of course. Ah, of course. It, I'm just saying it's a good thing you weren't a gamer because you were able to open a terminal on him server operating system and type i'm glad man i'm glad i'm not a gamer those guys seem like they're you need an x button for everything man jeez yeah Yeah. Yeah. where's the where's the one click install man (laughs) it's called a play button you know what is as as much static as i want to deliver with that that is something that valve with proton got right and i've been harping on that since proton first launched like the What's the biggest difference between something like um, Lutris versus Steam? Valve got it down to work, don't work with a fucking play button. Like, okay, you want to play the Windows title under Linux? Click play. I mean, uh, even that, even that's come with the big caveat, though. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's 100% that. at yeah. all, but I'm yeah. saying that what they're aiming for is the right approach. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and we, we were, we were talking about that earlier. Like we need to, we, you need to establish like what the baseline is to get a system ready to game. And part of the, it was clicking on a thing and having a program pop up. That, that's kind of your minimum requirements. So yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. Now we understand Unf- why un- that un- approach un- was. <laughs> yeah. And like, ah, Steve, I, I was talking about this on Wednesday. Like we talk about Valve and Steam playing the long, long game. Mm-hmm. Think about this. Now you understand where the um, Steam overlay with the controller support, where that idea started, what they were planning way back then. Like, yep. we need something that's going to be able to handle input. Oh, okay. I, I wonder how long they've been kicking around. Probably like six, seven years, man. Well, and, 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 and I mean, like, it, go, it goes to show you that supporting Linux as a gaming platform was the right move. Look at all this shit that's coming out with Windows 11 and trusted platform modules, incompatible CPUs and shit. Like, mm-hmm. it was smart on Valve to realize that they cannot put all their eggs in the Microsoft basket. Even with Intel announcing that, hey, man, if you got a Haswell, uh, no Vulcan, no, uh, no, no Vulcan, no DX12 for you, bro. Nope. Not, not unless yeah. you're running it through Vulcan. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. Oh, do you think that's going to 
become a thing now. And now we're going to have like DXV, DX12 well, week ape or whatever for Windows so they can. Play I, it I on mean, Asmo. they're already. They're already kind of doing it with DXVK on Windows, so that yeah. wouldn't surprise me if if they're just like, well, yeah, no, now now we'll make it work because it does the exact same shit just in Vulcan. Oh. And, and 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 again, this 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 is why Valve had the smart move with backing uh with backing their own implementation of the 3D backend because right. now they control that platform. They don't have to answer to Microsoft. They don't have to answer to Intel. They can just implement shit and be on with it, right? Like you, clever yeah. Gabe. All right, beautiful people. On that bombshell, we got to bounce out of here. Hey, thanks for joining us live. We do this each and every Saturday night, 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Head over to Twitch. There's a schedule button. It'll give you an alert if you click on something, I'm sure. If it doesn't, I write up a nasty email. But if you want to get a hold of me, I'm usually on Twitter, at Finstone, just hanging out, doing things, posting shit I find interesting. If not, I'm always in our Discord if you're a patron or if you're a sub on Twitch. We do have an IRC channel, though, completely free. And as always, right here, live. Try to get back to you. If you're to the Federated Timelines and all the Mastodon things, we get around Mastodon, mast.linuxgamecast.com. You can find me there, just at Ven, where I do occasionally post. I am Jordan Svung, the motherfucker who is constantly <laughs> trying to escape uphill. I Watch escape. me slip. I escape. I escape. Uh, no. Watch me slip on, at the Burning Fool on Twitter, or watch me slide at, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I am the pig boy known as Sandy Martin, and you can find me on Twitter at Ultimagus, or you can find me on the Mastodon at Ultimore. Wait, Ultimore at mast.linuxgamecast.com. Gentlemen, I thought you were the piss boy. Did we learn anything this week? <laughs> No. Yes. <laughs> As is tradition. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I, I I mean, yeah, we, we lack the we lack the number of limbs. I'm just saying we characters. skirted by on that one, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we pretty much Man, not, now 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 you're just making me sad that I'm not a spider. Arachnids. Hey, let's All right, well, we got to thank our advisors, Omegas, our Theron, our executive producers. We got Aldius, Bar Bram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Foxdog, Atomic McAss, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Kohaku. And Chicago Kicks Ass with Darkwing and Abstraction, along with some sea monsters like Jack B, Renault L, Ryder X Machina, Truggy, Veritanuta, Justin Frostclaw, and Strider. Sandy, can you read? And with the Death Notes, we got Nova K, Basil B, Chad, P, Romeo, V, uh, Marcelin, uh, System T, Craig H, uh, Renee, uh, Reginald, <laughs> Stephen B, Reginald. Mr. Amish, Dorda Gorgeek, Colin T, Ed Mag, Ryan T G, Daniel L, Vascott, Nubin, Douglas, Rums, Watts, uh, Thomas T, Martin W, Rohit, Mir, Jonas, Rulo, Steve B. Oh man, look at those fuckers. So many fine, upstanding cannibals. Hey, Amen. Carl, I bye. finally got a blinky wall. Arthur and Lux through all all those guys. Read their names. Oh, Actually, I, I don't know. Reading one. is hard. We'll see you I next week read. when reading is flat. Yeah, hey, Amen. I, listen, I, I was asking. I was taking a gamble. Like, Sandy, can you if read? you can read, it's you can bleed. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>